In this video, I'll show you how I painted the new Chaos Knight Abominant using only one Citadel colour. Can you guess which one it is? I'll explore the Pro Kill range of paints as well as some Vallejo Metallics to see if they're a viable alternative to Citadel. So let's get started. The first thing I did was build the model and prime all the skeleton and any metal bits in black and I primed all the armor panels in a bright white and that's because I want a nice bright color which I'll show you next. Next up I needed to decide on a color scheme so I got into the codex and had a little flick through and I found this yellow knight. Now I love the color yellow and this looked fantastic and as I kept turning the pages there was an actual model painted in this scheme and I thought fantastic. I'm having it. Let's go. Struggling to get it into shot and forgetting to press record as I started painting, the first colour I'm using is Gunmetal from Vallejo Model Air and I'm using this over all of the night skeleton. Next up it's onto the armour plates and the first test of the Pro Acryl range by Monument Hobbies. So the base yellow I'm using is warm yellow and I'm going to airbrush this over all of the panels that I want to be yellow in the end. I'm using this completely neat straight from the pot. I've given it a good shake and I've changed the cap to a flip top lid rather than one of the, those pointy screw tops that, that are fantastic and it's covering really really well. To highlight some of those edges and wider areas I'm using golden yellow. Now this will desaturate it a little bit but it really suits the look of the night and again I'm using this completely neat with a fairly high pressure straight on top of that warm yellow and again it's coming out really nicely. The first Pro Acryl Metallic I'm going to use is going to be copper and I'm going to use this over the exhausts as well as the main weapon and Again, I'm using this completely neat straight into the airbrush, and this is actually coming out really nicely. That's a fantastically smooth copper colour. Next up, it's that loincloth, and I'm basing this using Pro Curl Burgundy. And then once I've got that covered, and I've been very careful not to get it onto any of the yellow parts, I'm going to highlight it using the airbrush and plum, again from Pro Curl. And what I'm looking to do here is just catch those raised areas, leaving that burgundy in the recesses. Next up, I want to get started on the red accent colours. Uh, for the stripe down the middle of the carapace, I've just used some masking tape. It's not perfectly flat because of all the lumps and bumps, but that's okay. I'll show you how to cover up any overspray later on. So firstly, I'm laying down a coat of burnt red, and that's a, a really nice dark red, a little bit like corn red. And then we're going for bold pyro red over that to highlight it, which is a really nice bright red and really does contrast nicely against that yellow. Removing masking tape is always a satisfying endeavour, just make sure that paint is dry before you crack on. You can see there are some areas of overspray but I will show you how to easily fix this and blend it all seamlessly into the model later on. Next up I blocked in all of the black parts of the armour plates using scale 75 decay black. I prefer this to a bad and black, it covers a little bit better. Just make sure the coats are nice and thin if you do use this uh, in between layers so you don't get any brush strokes. Next up we'll do the trim which is probably the most time consuming part of the night and I don't want to waste any time so I'm going to do some science and I'm going to take some Dura Aluminium from Vallejo Metal Colour and Dark Silver from Pro Acryl. Now the Dark Silver from Pro Acryl covers really well and the Dura Aluminium from Metal Colour has got really nice fluidity. So by mixing the two you get the best elements of both and let's go. You can see how really nice and smooth and how good the coverage is on this mix of paints as it goes on and really contrasts nicely against the yellow and black and red elements of the armour. This is a great combination of colours, I really like it. Next up we'll go back to copper and we'll use the brush to apply this over all those spiked elements that you see on the shoulder pads, on all of the other armour plates as well and this just adds more contrast again rather than having silver against silver. And while we've got that copper out we'll also use it on the exoskeleton of the model just to add some little accent colours around the various parts of silver. It breaks it up really nicely and if you're not sure where to put this just stick your finger in the air and pick a spot or check the box art. Either way it's just designed to add some interest. Now blink and you will miss it, the only Citadel paint I'm using on this model is Black Templar Contrast Paint and I'm using this for all of the cabling. So no matter how you've primed it, whether it's light or whether it's metallic, just pop this on and you'll get a really nice effect with a straight highlight and shade. The last area to base in is going to be the bone elements and we're going to do this using Golden Brown. Now this is another Pro Acryl colour that's not quite a bony colour but it should give us a nice base. So just pop this over all the skulls, any spikes, any bone areas that you've got. Once we've blocked in all those colours it's time to add a coat of gloss varnish to the model. Once that's completely dry we're going to move on to the decals. Now to apply the decals I just cut it out of the backing paper, pop it onto some paper towel, 
wet it so it's submerged in water wait a few seconds and then just test it with a brush once it starts to move i'll slide it off the backing paper and use a brush just to pop it onto the model i'm going to let this dry completely and then i'm going to add another coat of gloss varnish just to seal it in next up it's time to repair that red overspray and damage up that red stripe a little bit so all i'm going to do is get a little bit of warm yellow on my brush use an old synthetic brush for this i'm going to wipe it off on a paper towel i'm then going to basically look to the edges and just stipple away at those edges creating some damage around them and covering up any of that overspray now this is a really nice really effective way to do things the other thing you can do is take a nice fine pointed brush and just use this to simulate scratches in the armor by doodling in some nice straight lines or some dots once you've tidied that part up it's time to dirty up all of the model and the color we're going to use with this well it's not an acrylic color we're going to use an oil wash and the color we're using is van dyke brown now, if you've not seen me do an oil wash before, it's really straightforward. I'm just putting a little bit of oil into a little metal plate. And I'm going to put quite a lot of white spirit. I'm using odorless white spirit. It doesn't smell too much. I'm going to mix it up to make a nice thin wash. All I then do is put my brush in the wash and I take it to the model and just tap it on a part. And you can see there the capillary action draws that quite a distance because I've got quite a lot in my brush. So all I'm going to do is cover all parts of the model in this Van Dyke brown wash and that's going to give it a really nice dirty look. I leave that wash dry for about half an hour to let that what bit of white spirit is there evaporate and that will leave that oil film on the surface. Now really easy to clean most of this off. Just take a makeup sponge or a cotton bud q-tip for my American friends and use this to wipe away at the oil. Now I'm doing this in a particular way, I'm swiping everything from top to bottom as the plate sits on the model and that's to simulate the kind of the grease and the grain and the dirt all running down those plates and settling into some of those recesses. Now start off by just taking a little, it's always easier to go back and if you want to take a lot off then just dump a little bit of white spare on your sponge first. Once you're happy with how your oil wash looks and it's dried for about an hour, I'm then going to take some matte varnish and spray this over everything. It'll dull it right down, but it'll also seal that oil layer so you don't have to worry about waiting days for it to dry. Next up, we're going to go in and start chipping those paint colours. And essentially, all I'm doing is using a much brighter colour. So, for example, on the carapace, I'm using ivory and on the weapon, I'm using plum. And you can see I'm just stippling it on really roughly. Next up, I'm going to take some dark warm grey and use this exactly the same way, but just make sure I add less on there so it shows chipping right through to the base colour of the armour. We're on to weathering the silver next, and you've guessed it, it's good old chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Exactly the same technique, pop your brush in it, wipe most of it off, and then stipple it around the edges of the silver metallics. And this gives you a really nice worn, battered metallic look. I highlight all of the bone areas, leaving those darker colours in the recesses using ivory, again from Procryl. Just making sure I've got a decent point on my brush and being fairly accurate with drawing the lines, using the shape of the model where I can. I want to start adding some verdigris to all those copper areas now. Normally I'd use nylac oxide, but I'm not using Citadel paints in this, so I'm going to use Bright Jade from Procryl. And I'm going to thin this right down with quite a bit of water. Now once that's thinned down, I'm going to pop my brush in it and then I'm going to wipe most of that away on a paper towel and then I'm just going to go in and stipple this across the copper areas. And as it dries, it'll dull a little bit. Uh, and I'm really impressed with how this looks. It's, it's going really nicely and in many ways it's a little bit better than nylac oxide, I think, because you've got a lot more control over how you apply it. Next up, I want to add some rust and the colour I'm using for this is burnt orange. Again, I'm popping it on my palette and thinning it down quite a lot. Once I'm happy with how much it's thinned down, I'm then going to wipe my brush off and put this into the recesses. And you can see this is going into all those little joints where any water will accumulate. And again, this is giving me a really nice effect for very little effort. We're getting towards the end of the model now and it's looking great. I'm really impressed with the Pro Acryl paints. So it's time to do all the lenses. Now this next paint is one of the gems in the line. It's bold titanium white. It covers fantastically well. And I'm going to use this to paint all the eye lenses, any glowing orbs, as well as the coils, those glowing coils on the weapon. To get those lenses glowing and to add a little bit of a glow to the coil on the weapon, we're going to use bright yellow green. Now I'm going to thin this down and just layer it up gently. It's a really nice colour, nice limey green. I love how it looks. 
The last part we're going to paint on the model is all of the kind of smoke weathering that we need to do on the exhausts and on the vents on the back of the carapace. And the colour we're going to use for this is coal black from Pro Acryl. And the reason I'm using this is because it dries very matte. And I don't think it's quite black. I think it's a very, very, very dark grey. So for this purpose, it's absolutely fantastic. And there we have it. Painting a Chaos Knight using only one Citadel colour, but mixing in some Vallejo and some Pro Acryl. What do I think about the Pro Acryl? I absolutely love them. I think they are fantastic paints, either on the brush or through the airbrush. Now, do you want to see me do more tutorials using Pro Acryl as opposed to Citadel? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please check out some of my other content, and I will see you next time.